Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and I am here today with a project for Not Too Shabby. I'm going to be getting a little bit messy and making a card with their new Bouquet of Happiness stamp set. I hope you'll stick around and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to the channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. We're so glad that you're here again. Like I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be getting a little messy today. I'm going to do the ink smooshing technique to make kind of a rainbow background for the focal point in that bouquet of happiness stamp set. I will also be using one of the sentiments, I haven't chosen it yet, as well as a little splatter stamp here. To get ready for that ink smooshing, I got out a little water mister a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth that is four and a quarter by five and a half, a rainbow of mini ink cubes, and I know it's hard to see, but I have a little piece of clear cardstock, or if you have acetate sheets or clear plastic packaging, and this is about five by seven. Now later, as we get into the process, I will let you know about any other tools or products I use. But as always, if I leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started on today's card, I'm going to be doing the ink smooshing. So I got out the supplies I would need for that, as well as this cutting mat to protect my work surface. I started by putting some ink from each color cube across the center of my piece of clear cardstock. It's probably two or three inches wide. And once I have the first set of colors down, I put it on top of my white piece of cardstock and I went back in with any inks I thought might need a a little extra color on them. After I had enough color down, I brought in my mister and I sprayed it all over the piece of clear cardstock until I thought it was wet enough. And this is just something that you'll have to play around if you give this a try. And I also misted my cardstock just a little bit. Then I picked up that piece of clear cardstock, flipped it over, and getting my colors at an angle, I kind of wiggled it back and forth, and then I laid it flat down onto the cardstock and gently kind of smooshed the ink out to a look that I liked. I wanted to make sure there weren't any harsh edges on any of the colors or like straight lines. Now, once I had that where I wanted it, I set it to the side for about five minutes to let that soak in. Once that had some time to dry and for the ink to set in, I brought in a towel and I cleaned off my work surface and then I flipped my piece over and cleaned off the clear cardstock around it. For myself, I like to peel the cardstock up from the clear piece. I find sometimes if the clear is on the top that I end up with lines of color down the edges. I do pull it away from that piece pretty quickly to avoid any ink pooling up. My next step was to bring in my heat tool to help the drying process. If you don't have one of these or if you just want to let it dry naturally, you can definitely do that too. I just have no patience and wanted to move on. I brought in some stitch nesting dies and I chose two different sizes and off screen I cut the rainbow piece with the smaller die and then I cut a scrap of black cardstock with the larger one. These fit nicely together and I love that stitched look. Now it's time to do the stamping. I will be starting with the big floral image and I will be using VersaFine Onyx Black for each stamp today. Now normally I put my pieces in the lower right hand corner of my misty, but because I want the flower to hang off the bottom right edge of the inked piece, I did put that in the center and just use a piece of painter's tape rolled up to help the magnet hold it in place. 
because the stamp is pretty detailed and the cardstock I used has some texture to it, I did ink this up and stamp it twice and I added a little extra pressure with my presser tool. Unfortunately, I missed recording the part where I finished the stamping. I added the sentiment and three of the splatters around the card front and here is a look at that. Now all of the main pieces are ready so it's time to put the card together. Off camera I created a top fold card base and I started by adding my inked piece to the black cardstock mat. I am keeping this card pretty flat just by adding everything with ATG, no dimensionals or foam tape. And to finish it off you know I need just a little bling so I brought in some small holographic sequins and next to each of the splatter stamps I added two dots of glue. I let that sit for about about five seconds before I brought in my jewel picker and added a sequin to each of those glue dots. And here is a close up look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until the next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.